Sisters and brothers, I came across a story last week. A group of tourists visited a crocodile farm. When they arrived, the owner of the place launched a bold proposal. He said, whoever is brave enough to jump in the water, swim <clears throat> to the coast and survive, I will give you one million dollars. For a while, no, no one dared to move. And then suddenly a man jumped into the water and desperately swam to the shore while being chased by all the crocodiles. With enormous luck, he made it to the other side, taking in the admiration of everyone on the scene. Then uh, the owner announced, we have a brave winner. So after collecting his reward, the man and his wife returned to the hotel. When they arrived, the hotel manager told him, you were really brave to jump. You won yourself a million dollars. And the man looked at the hotel manager and said, I didn't jump, somebody pushed me. <laughs> I'm sure you would agree, sisters and brothers, that sometimes we, live a, we need a little push to take that leap of faith. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you this day for bringing us once again into your house. We thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We pray now, dear God, that you orchestrate the receptivity of our hearts so that we'll hear your message. Help us, dear God, today to listen with our ears and listen with our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, the scripture lesson so movingly read this morning from Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52, urges us to take another step up, to step up another rung on the ladder of faith. Faith is like a ladder which, if we, we keep climbing, gets us to the things that we hope for and the things that we have not yet seen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 declares that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Another version says faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Another way of saying this is that faith is when you hold on to the assurance or certainty that God in his omnipotence can turn what we hope for into reality according to his divine will. Not our will, but according to his will. Still another way of thinking about faith is that faith is when you believe that the invisible, and I might add the invincible God, presently has an answer that has the very best response to a situation, although you do not yet see it. Sisters and brothers in Christ and creation, as you are well aware, in any discourse on faith, the word believe is of highest importance. Although ostensibly mundane, it is noteworthy that the word believe appears 272 times across 27 books in the New Testament and 143 times across 17 different books in the New King James Version of the Old Testament. But the appearance of the word believe in 472 15 instances on the pages of Holy Writ is significant because each time you see it, I submit this morning, it carries with it the breath of God. It is the word. It carries with it the breath of God. God breathing faith and life into us when we are weary, when we are heavy, when we are sad. In the 415 occurrences of this word believe, you hear an urgency in the Holy Spirit's whisper for us to believe 
like we never have before. Believe carries with it an urgency for believing to translate from just words. Believe carries with it an urgency for believing to translate from just words on pages to action in our daily living. The very act of believing in other words, when we truly believe, especially believing against the most daunting odds when we're facing those circumstances of life, faith becomes like a dynamic force that moves the hand of God to act in our favor. But sometimes the problem is that we exercise our faith with timidity. Sometimes faith challenges us, it challenges, life challenges us. It knocks the wind out of us, takes the wind out of our sails. And we start dreaming small instead of dreaming big. In those moments, we need a strong faith. Some fear creeps into the picture. Some uncertainty enters our hearts. We start to trust God with caution rather than with boldness. We try to hold on to faith, but at the same time, we are holding on to a little doubt because we do not want to be disappointed in the end. This is timid faith. This is not the faith that God wants us to have. God does not give us timid faith, but I would say to you, sisters and brothers, today God gives us audacious faith. This is the reason I am using today as a subject from which to preach the audacity of faith. The audacity of faith. Audacity is not a word that we use every day, but we see it in many areas of life. Audacious explorers discovered new places, crossed uncharted waters, and even walked on the moon. Audacious missionaries answered the call of God, left their homes and churches, traveled across oceans carrying the gospel message to distant lands. Audacious people don't let life's circumstances defeat them. They face life head on. Every day is a new day for aud audacious people. Audacious people hear and see God saying yes today, yes today is a new day despite the turmoil of yesterday or even amid tough issues that might begin to come up today. Audacious faith is bold faith. It is courageous faith, Christ-centered faith that is daring and will not be stopped by the winds of adversity. Audacious faith rests on the words of Jesus who said to his disciples, in this world you shall have tribulations. But then comes the last part of that verse. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The text this morning, sisters and brothers, calls our attention to audacious faith. Have you ever been in a situation where you had to exercise audacious faith. In other words, it was not enough to just believe. You had to do more than just believe. You had to believe boldly. Usually, life situations determine what kind of uh, uh, faith is required. If you look closely at the text this morning, there are almost two worlds in the text. Bartimaeus' world of a health challenge and Jesus' world of teaching, preaching, being followed by a crowd. Notice, if you please, that 
Jesus was 10 days from the cross. I say two worlds because sometimes in our life issues and concerns, we feel isolated from what is happening around us. So we end up having our own world in which we're trying to figure out things around us. We're trying to figure out what's happening. And sometimes we do not know which way to turn. We live in a world of myriad challenges. People have all sorts of things they're facing. There are many challenges, health challenges, bereavement, issues with decision-making, emptiness, economic need, etc. Hear me. It is not that people always completely lose faith in these situations, but that faith is weakened by a sense of isolation. The common responses that I have heard fall somewhere along these lines. I have prayed, but nothing happened. The nature of this issue is such that I don't know if I can wait. It has been too long now. I see others going through things that they are, and they're getting no answers to their prayers yet. Then you hear this. Good people seem to suffer the most. Why? That, is, that last one is a question of theodicy. I will not address it this morning. But I would just say that these questions are normal under the circumstances. Yet they can blind us to the truth that faith is assurance and believing in God for what you have not yet seen. The not yet is forward looking. So inherent in the very act of faith is the challenge to keep looking forward to God's response. God always has a response. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, was blind. Sisters and brothers, he lacked the financial means to care for himself. His days were spent on the roadside begging for alms. While a person's life situation can isolate them. It does not have to imprison them. As believers, faith can be operational in whatever situation a person finds themselves. We do not know how long. We do not know how long Bartimaeus had been blind. But he woke up each morning, was probably led to the place where he sat, endured all that you can possibly imagine one in his situation would have had to endure sitting by the roadside. This tells us something about Bartimaeus. It tells us something about his faith. You can almost imagine there had to be faith to get up every day and go sit on the roadside, whatever in that condition, whatever we are going through, faith gets us up in the morning. Faith gets us moving. And when we start to run out of fuel, faith sustains us. So in a crucial sense, courageous faith, audacious faith, is to believe that God is fully present and at work, even though we may not yet see all that we hope for. One of the most intriguing verses of the text is that 47th verse that says, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout 
and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This is where we begin to see a marvelous example of bold faith, audacious faith. He did not become so absorbed in his circumstances that he could not hear that Jesus was passing by. Sisters and brothers, audaciously, Bartimaeus pulled himself out of his circumstances when he heard the voice of Jesus. God tries to get our attention in so many ways. God may bring someone into our lives to get our attention. You see, God wanted Bartimaeus to get Jesus' attention, but God was trying to get Bartimaeus' attention. There was an appointment there, an appointed purpose. And God does the same with us. Sometimes he brings someone into your life just to get your attention. Sometimes he just interrupts our plans. He may produce a restlessness in our spirit. He may bring an unexpected situation. Sometimes we miss how God may be trying to get our attention because we are so absorbed by our circumstances, our situations. But I come this morning to say to some of us, to those of us who are hearing this word this morning, I come to say to someone that the responding God, I come to say that the responsive God always has a response always is passing by to respond to our need, always has a response that lies somewhere in the future or just beyond where we are in our lives at the moment. But indeed, the present where we are, in which God is already working in and through us, is not disconnected from the future. Hear me today. Not only did Bart Bartimaeus have his physical condition to deal with, but he now had to deal with a crowd. Sometimes we have to deal with a crowd. There are a whole host of things that could prevent us from hearing and responding to the Lord. Sometimes people may influence us. At other times, situations and worries may distract us, our own life interests and activities may sometimes take our focus away from him. At other times, doubts might tell us it's no use. In some cases, people are so tied to things that stand in the way of getting closer to Jesus that it takes courage. Courageous faith, bold faith to step away and move closer to Jesus. The text says many ordered him sternly to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. This was not a few people trying to keep Bartimaeus silent. They did not just tell him to keep quiet, but tried to use authority, their authority to suppress his voice. But he yelled out even more loudly. There's clearly a reason that Mark wants us to know that he yelled out even more loudly. Perhaps the sterner they got, in their rebuke and telling him to be quiet, the louder he became. This is the audacity of faith. Faith that will not quit. Faith that will not be silent. It does not matter what the issue is. God calls us, calls all his people through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives to this kind of faith audacious faith. I, I am talking about an active believing, 
and trusting that God knows us, God hears us, God sees us, sees where we are, and that God will respond with power in his own good time. Audacious, bold faith shines the brightest in the waiting season. Somewhere in Isaiah, the prophet said, speaking the word of God to the people, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Sisters and brothers, I met a gentleman, Charles, some years back at a Faith for Today and Tomorrow conference. And he told me his story. His story has stayed with me ever since. He said to me in a six year period, he went from one job to another. It's a very intelligent man who was truly passionate and excited about the work he did. He was hardworking and tried to move his life forward. He had big dreams. On all his jobs, he tried to apply himself, but he kept being let go from one job and then another job and then he was let go again and on and on. Even though he was let go from the job, sisters and brothers, he never stopped believing that things would work out. He remained faithful to God and didn't stop believing that something would eventually work. There were days when he asked God why, queried God, as we see so many do in scripture. Yet, he woke up the next morning, even though at night he questioned God, he woke up the next morning with an audacious faith and kept looking forward to what God had in store for him. He saw God in the moment and kept looking forward. He went back to school, took some classes. He kept looking forward. Even though he was frustrated sometimes, he did not let go of the handle of faith. Every day he woke up in prayer and gratitude. Overnight, over eight or nine years, he said, of big challenges, he kept surrendering the situation to the Lord. Eventually, Charles secured a position at a company, a reputable company. And he, as he went forward, became successful. Indeed, the other places were a training ground for what God had in store for Charles. Hear me this morning. I'm talking about audacious faith. I asked Charles how he got through those years. How did you get through those years, Charles? He said, all I could say over the years were these words I got from my mother. He would say these words in the morning, at noonday and, and at nighttime. I hear the Savior say, thy strength in thee is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Charles is one of the happiest people you'd ever meet. His love for what he does did not get derailed by circumstances. Sisters and brothers, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust that we are talking about this morning, Trusting in God, this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. It's our handle on what we cannot see. A courageous faith gets Jesus' attention. Jesus called for Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus throws off his cloak, springs up, and goes to Jesus. By faith, Bartimaeus receives his sight. Doesn't always happen immediately for everyone. God's work of healing power 
pours forth from eternity into time. God heals people. God heals communities. God heals societies. Pablo Diaz reminds us in his writing, and I quote, that having faith doesn't mean we will get instantly all the things we pray for or that our situations will change overnight. However, it provides us with the courage to bear challenges, endure the unexpected, and embrace change. When our human strength is depleted, faith connects us to the source of power and the source of life. God reminds us today that it is not enough to just have faith, but to have bold, courageous, audacious faith that believes God, no matter the nature of the storm, faith that will prevent us from being distracted by circumstances and situations. By truly believing Jesus Christ, we can see God working on our behalf in the present as we remain expectant of God's response to us that lies in the future. John Wesley reminds us that God does nothing except in response to believing prayer. Amen.